Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Now, as you've already heard on the show, Cam Lee, who we all know is one of the very first, if not the first, to implement death metal vocals to the music we know now as death metal, back with Death and Massacre, is part of a split album featuring his solo work along with a False Prophet. Welcome to the show, Cam. And thank you, Jet, for having me on the show. I hope, you know, the listeners are tuning in and not actually turning it off saying, you know, fuck that Cam Lee guy. I I don't want to hear what he's got to say. So, Cam, when did you start tinkering around with solo work? I guess you could say as far back as probably the beginning of 2000s, um, really before even Denial Fiend. I started writing my own material all the way back then. Um, I still didn't really know how to play guitar that well, and I just started picking up the guitar and teaching myself. But two of the songs that are on the first Denial Fiend album I actually wrote, uh, Let the Blood Flow and Ripped Inside Out. So I guess you can kind of say I started writing my own material as far back as I would say 2000. Uh, I actually even did a, a demo um, of, a, of a band I was calling Phlegathon at the time. I did uh, just two demos off of an 8-track recording um, back then. Um, again, n- really doing the basic guitar work uh, using a drum machine and uh, a bass and just doing it that way. Um, So I would say that my solo work has been going on pretty much from then. Now my solo stuff that I recently did, probably I would say pretty much probably since 2014 is when I really started getting back into writing for myself. And Cam, how does your solo work differ from projects you have done with your other bands? I would say that it differs basically because I'm not limiting myself to just uh, death metal style or a certain style. I'm actually taking influences from stuff that I grew up on, especially stuff like early Misfits, a lot of the punk stuff that I grew up on as a teenager, um, a lot of uh, early Danzig um, but also, uh, you know, branching out and doing other stuff. Like I, I did a little like um, solo project part that was uh, based on, um, you know, nursery rhymes and fairy tales and stuff like that. And I based that music off of stuff like the cramps and the psychobilly surf punk stuff that I really like as well. So I'm not limiting anything that I do to one specific style. Um, I've done a couple of demos and of course, a later on a collection of those demos got released in a release that I released on my own, on my own label called of dread and death. So it was like Camly of dread and death. It was basically all the demos I kind of done and put them together and released a, a limited run of those. Now, when writing for your solo work, where do you draw inspiration from both musically as well as lyrically Cam? Well, like I said, I don't really limit myself. Um, I would say musically, it's everything that I, I like. Like I said, uh, punk, going back to old school punk, D-beat punk, crust punk, um, early Misfits, early Danzig. I'm really a big fan of that kind of stuff, but also a little bit of industrial. Of course, it's I've got that Hellhammer, early Celtic Frost kind of vibe going on when I, when I write my guitar riffs. Um, so, like I said, I don't really limit myself musically, uh, and I, I, I draw inspirations from all the styles and kind of things that I, I've kind of grew up on and, and enjoyed, you know, and still enjoy. Now, lyrically, it could be anything. It's I still am very, very lyrically influenced by horror movies. I'm a big horror movie genre buff, so a lot of my uh, lyrics will always go back to horror movies but for my Camly solo stuff there was a couple stuff that you know if I was pissed off or angry about something I took those misanthropic type feelings and turned those into lyrics as well so there's a lot of that uh, also my um, ideas you know based on uh, you know things like religion um, I'm an atheist uh, so I wrote a song um, basically on that kind of atheist view of you know, religion and belief in gods, uh, which I have none. So I kind of wrote about that. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Like I said, the Cam Lee stuff doesn't limit itself to one specific pocket, or I don't put myself in one 
corner where I can't get out of. I allowed my solo stuff to be anything that I want it to be. Of course, you know, I'm going to not do anything that's like country music or hip hop based, but you know, whatever I like, particularly uh, anything from, like I said, the punk side of things, the crust punk side of things, the, the old school death metal side of things, the uh, dark industrial side of things to even like um, psychobilly, surf punk, whatever. It, it just, I just try to kind of put it together and make something that's cool and unique and different. And Cam, how do you go about finding musicians for your solo stuff? Or do you do all that yourself? Um, when I'm writing my stuff, it's pretty much, uh, I write everything myself. Um, I play the guitars. I come up with the guitar riffs. I, I don't really do good with leads or solos, but I come up with the basic uh, foundation. The bass, I actually write everything on bass first, actually. Um, a lot of the stuff I write is on bass guitar, you know, guitar first, and then I add the guitar work and the drums. Um, it's really easy now with Easy Drummer. <laughs> so I use that, and I, I come up with, um, you know, using the Easy Drummer programs, come up with the, the basic uh, skeleton, and then write the riffs with basically the bass and then follow up with the guitars. And then if I have something or somebody that in mind that could follow up and do it better than me, then I'll contact him. Like on my um, seven inch uh, that released that came out, the reclamation of the fallen seven inch, I went to use Aaron, Aaron who, uh, Aaron Witzel, who actually plays in the band Cropsy Maniac, he also was the guitar player in my band, Akatharda. Um, I really felt that Aaron could uh, really capture what I was trying to do um, with the the songs I did on the 7-inch, which were, were basically, you know, we did two songs that I wrote, which were um, Reclamation of the Fallen and La Mashtu. Um, and we did a couple of cover songs. Now, on the 7-inch itself, there's only three tracks. There's uh, the two tracks, uh, Reclamation of the Fallen, La Mashtu, and then a cover song of the Ramones Pet Cemetery. But we also wrote an original little intro to that called The Cats, which is that's the lyrics in that is actually a poem from H.P. Lovecraft called The Cats. And I, I read the poem over great music and great atmospheric kind of stuff that Aaron wrote. And then we go into uh, Pet Cemetery from the Ramones, the cover of that. But um, the uh, CD version that I released on my own label has a little bit, a couple extras. We did a, um, a cover song of Poison from the band Venom, as well as a version of the theme for 28 Days Later. Now, on that uh, version of 28 Days Later, uh, Aaron basically played the the theme song for 28 days later and i went in and did uh, uh added some vocals and that that's just called 28 and that can only be found on that limited release that i put out again on my label death vocal records um i have that as well that came out um limited release i think i we did a hundred i think and pretty much i'm sold out i think i have maybe one copy left of that what kind of sound are you going for in your solo work well, like I said before, uh, the sound is is li is not limited to one specific style. I I just take, you know, influences from everything I like, just everything that I really enjoy growing up listening to, and stuff that I still enjoy now. So I wouldn't say it's limited to one style or sound or genre. Uh, it's very open. It's still got that death metal influence, but it's old school death metal influence mixed with more of a, you know, like I said, a very uh, Misfits, Danzig. I mean, there's so much that I take influence from and nothing, nothing ever sounds, you know, you can't pinpoint it to sounding anything uh, the same. Are there any elements that you try to steer clear from? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, like I said before, I'm not going to do any kind of country music or uh, hip hop or anything, uh, you know, like that. So I, I don't think you'll be getting, uh, you know, a Cam Lee country album anytime ever or a hip hop er album anytime ever. But, you know, I'm, I'm open to styles like I like. I mean, I like there's just a lot of like German industrial that I like. There's a lot of... Um, 
like I said, psychobilly that I like. And I know psychobilly actually can have a little bit of that country tang to it. But there's, of course, you know, it's its, its own variety of music. If you're not familiar with psychobilly music, I would suggest to go out and listen to the band called Demented or Go. They are like my favorite psychobilly band, besides early uh, necromantics. Um, pretty cool, like, psychobilly stuff. Totally not metal at all, but, you know, definitely if you want something different that still has a dark side to it with a bit of a sense of humor, I would say go for that. Demented or Go are definitely my go-to psychobilly band, though. And now, how do you, like, how do you go about recording? Uh, old school way, of course, you know. You know, get the boom box, you throw a towel over it and just press the, you know, the record button. No, of course not. Today... Technology is one of the great things that we have as musicians because it's so easy to make home recordings using, you know, a computer. Uh, a lot of people say that's fake. And that, I, I wish that, you know, um, analog recording was still available and accessible. It is available, but it's 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 very expensive. And uh, so, you know, but technology helps today, you know, with a lot of bands, a lot of people out there that wouldn't never have been heard 20 years ago so it's given us a lot of access and it, it gives us access to work with people overseas that we would never have been able to do like i said 20 years ago so um yeah i use a lot of basically the programs that are um made like reaper um recording reaper i i wish i could say i had pro tools but i don't but i use stuff like reaper and uh, audacity once in a while to to basically and i i do everything pretty much you know, like I said, uh, home recordings when I record my own stuff. And even when I record some of uh, other projects, I, I either go to somebody who's got a, a studio in their home that can record really well, or I've actually done some of the backup uh, guest vocals in my own house. Now that I have a house, I have built my own recording studio, vocal recording studio, and I'm able to record there as well. So when I do a lot of backup vocals or guest vocals for bands i'm able to record in my home studio and actually a couple of the last albums i did i got to record in my own studio so they came out really well and i'm very happy with how they came out and i just go about using that and uh, that's pretty much how i do it and do you have any of your work recorded already i mean do you have any music out well yeah like i said before i have the um cam lee of dread and death uh, compilation um, release that it's like all the demos that I did and uh, pretty much since like 2000 I don't know 2014 15 I just decided to throw them all together and put them out in a compilation uh, but what's really official I guess you could say that's an official release would be the Cam Lee Massacred EP uh, that came out on Metal Bastard Enterprises um, and that's out right now you could pick it up even on Amazon and uh uh, that basically is four of the old, four old massacre songs that were created back in the demo days. So they're basically old songs going all the way back to 1985. Um, there are four songs. There's uh, you know two songs on there that Alan was a part of, and two songs that Rick Ross was a part of. And uh, those songs never got put on an album or never got a proper recording. So I, I felt, and this goes back to 2010. Um, back in 2010, I got in touch with Ronnie Bornstrom, who was also from my band Bonar, and asked him if he could throw the music together, you know, make really good sound recordings of the music. And Ronnie did that for me. And then we kind of just sat on the tracks. Uh, the the We didn't really release them. And then um, I just decided, you know, why don't I just record the vocals to him? Ronnie had lost the actual uh, files for those songs. He just had, we just had the, the, the wave files that he had, he had the actual song files. He kind of lost after he moved to studio. And I was thinking, you know, why don't I just go ahead and record the vocals for him anyways? So I did that. I recorded the vocals, uh, just did it like in one take old school style, just threw them all in the, all in the computer, let them run through. And I just did the vocals and, and like you would back in the old days and try to get my voice to sound a little bit more, not so deep, uh, and try to be more coherent with the vocals and uh, just ran it through like that, try to go like that. And that's while the recording got made. Um, then I was approached by Metal Bastard uh, Enterprises. Oliver from Metal Bastard Enterprises asked me if I would be interested in releasing um, some material. And I said, you know what? 
I said, I did put this out on a limited release, but let's get this out worldwide because I know there's a lot of fans out there, especially fans of the old Massacre, that really want those old tracks. And the only way they're going to get them is this way. And that's what I did. I released uh, that uh, this year, and it's 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 sold. It's been selling pretty well. I mean, it's still a lot of people out there don't even realize it's out there, but it's out there. It's under my own, like I said, my own name, Cam Lee. It's called Massacred. It's four old Massacre tracks. It's Aggressive Tyrant, uh, Clangor of War, Inhuman Condition. No, not Inhuman Condition. Sorry. Infestation of Death and Perpetual Domination. And it's, like I said, four old Massacre tracks that got recorded in a better sounding, you know, recording. And that's what's out now. And that's what I have. Also, uh, like I mentioned before, I have the 7-inch out, which is Reclamation of the Fallen 7-inch. That's got songs, two songs that I actually wrote. It's Reclamation of the Fallen and Lamash 2 as well as a cover song of the Ramones' Pet Cemetery, and a little intro to that, which is called The Cats, that uh, Aaron Witzel, who played guitar on that, helped write. So that's uh, two official releases that's out, and that's also out on uh, Iron Pegasus Records that was released at 7-inch. But I also released a, a version of it myself on my own label that's a CD version, very limited, that has a couple extra stuff, like I said before, has a Venom, tune cover tune and also a cover song of 28 days later now in november you have the split coming out with false prophet were you approached for this and why did you think this was a good idea well yeah again like i said um oliver from metal bastard enterprises approached me about it and said hey you want to do a a cool seven inch release um i said sure he said do you have a song for it i said uh, I have some songs, but I have something else I'd like to try to do. And um, I actually went and I approached Roga Johansson, who I work with in, um, of course, you know, Bonar, as well as the Grotesquerie and the Skeletal and many other projects we've done together. And I had just recently worked with Johnny Pedersen, who we did the Not Rovden album together. And I kind of went to Roga. I said, Roga, do you have any you know material that we can you know write? I got this chance to release this song, and um, Roga said, Yeah, I've got something. And we gave it over to Johnny, and Johnny finished it up. He put he did the the drums for it and the and the bass for it, and sent it over to me. And I threw the vocals down for it. I had an idea what I wanted to do vocally um, and lyrically, and uh, kind of worked it all in, and it, and it just worked out. And it all came together rather fast because, like I said, I've worked with Roga for years. Roga knows kind of like what we're style we're going to go with and stuff like this. And um, it was real easy just to basically say, yeah, I'm looking for this, like in this kind of style. And Roga just threw it together and, and it was really well, you know, sounded really great. It was was the kind of like uh, simple song I was trying to go for. Gave it to Johnny. Johnny did a great job of not only playing the bass and adding the drums, but also mixing it as well. And uh, we got that song done, and that song's called Cease to Exist, and that's the song you're going to hear, uh, you know, in a few minutes, I guess, I would assume, after you did this interview done. So tell us a little bit about the song on the split and why you think it's a good choice for this particular project. Um, I think it's a good choice uh, for the split because, like I said, it kind of like, it, it, it really goes back to that real death metal kind of stuff um it's it's a great choice because it got i get to showcase two of the guys two musicians who i've really enjoyed and had the best experience working with rogo johansson who i've been working with now for a decade uh since 2007 pretty much and um also uh johnny Pedersen, who is in his own right is a, a fantastic musician both these guys are from sweden and if anybody knows me old school knows that I love Swedish death metal. That was like, that was the sweetest stuff. When I, even when I came out back in the day and then I got to hear that first wave of Swedish death metal, I was, I was like, this is the shit I like. This is what I like. I fuck the American stuff. Fuck the stuff I'm doing. This is where it's at. So everybody knows I'm a huge Swedish death metal fan. So the chance to actually get to work with a couple Swedish guys that are the, some of the best musicians in the genre of death metal coming out of Sweden is the dream come true. And I got the chance to take both the musicians that I'm very proud and honored to work with, Rogo Johansson and Johnny Pedersen, have them to come together and create a song together with me, I felt was the best way to showcase something. And I felt that's what works uh, on, on this the split. 
So, Kim, do you plan on making more and recording more music for your solo work? Yeah, I do, actually, because I want to actually bring um, my my solo project out on the road that I decided, you know, it's, it's about time that I, I actually find local musicians that will be able to do not only the songs that I've already got out and learn those songs and present those songs live, but also going to be forming and writing new material. So I, I started looking for some local musicians. I have some guys in mind that I'm working with currently right now. Hopefully we'll start playing it out by next month, probably, or at least by December, which is what I'm really shooting for. And if things work out with these guys now, they're going to be the pretty much the core band for anything in the future. And I would like to work on, instead of a soft release like I've been doing, I'd like to work on a full-length album and get a full-length album out. And I'm really shooting for uh, next year, 2020, to be a really big year for me with everything. Not just my solo stuff, but with Massacre, which I'm sure listeners right now are wondering what the hell's going on with massacre man we want to hear cam lee talk about that i'll come back and talk about that trust me i think jet's gonna have me come back on the show and i'm gonna talk about everything that went down and and you know i there's now i'm not gonna use it as a rag session or a shit on somebody session i'm just gonna give you guys the facts and tell you what's happened what happened and what the future is but uh, as far as my stuff goes, my solo stuff, I'm also working, like I said, with some local musicians, guys that are here in Florida, that it's going to be more, it's going to be easier uh, to work with guys that are locally to be able to start going out and performing live. And that's my plan right now. And now, do you already have musicians in mind for some of your future solo works? And yeah, I mean, that's the whole idea. I want to basically go out and start playing some shows. And it's like I said, it's easier working with uh, musicians that are locally so that can happen. And Cam, you've been in the music business for a long time, dealt with a lot of blows, but you still persevere. What keeps you driven? Stupidity? Uh, I don't have any idea what keeps me driven. No, I mean, what keeps me driven is the, the chance to be able to create, I think. Um, I'm a person, I love to create. I'm not just, you know, I'm not just a musician. Uh, I'm an artist as well, which I'm sure you've seen some of my artwork. I'm, I, and none of this stuff I'm great at. There's, got, there's guys out there that do this shit way better than I do. But I still, I still strive to do what I do and have fun at what I do, regardless if it's art, if it's doing music, hell, if it's just cooking, I'm, I feel I'm a pretty damn good chef. Um, according to my wife, I'm a pretty goddamn good chef. So I, I, I've always been in this field of creative stuff. I, I, I'm not one of those lazy motherfuckers that just sits around the house and drinks fucking whiskey all day and doesn't do anything. I actually go out, I have a home I'm very proud of. I go out and do everything from the landscaping, the yard work, all that kind of stuff. I'm a very creative individual, and what drives me to do stuff is the ability to be able to create something from nothing, to be able to pull something together, create it, and be proud of that creation. And I think that's all that really matters, as long as that um, doing something that I'm proud of, that's what motivates me. So Cam will be on again possibly next month to talk about Massacre. But until then, Cam, is there anything you could tell us about the fate of the band? Well, as I said before earlier, Massacre will continue. Massacre will go on. There's a lot of uh, refurbishing right now that the band is going through. Um, you can kind of say that the band is under construction, uh, so to speak. And uh, we're, we're adding a brand new uh, lineup. We're going to get uh, more professional musicians to come in and help us do this the right way. And um, we're basically looking to uh, continue the band in 2020 with a brand new, uh, like I said, professional uh, management company, professional uh, musicians that are coming in to help. Uh, there'll be a new album and new material Material and we'll continue forwards. Okay, well, Cam, thank you for coming on the show to tell us a little bit about your solo project and your split and what's going on with Massacre, and we'll be talking to you soon, and all the best to you with the uh, solo project and the split album. Okay, well, Jet, thank you uh, for allowing me to come on the radio and talk about my, um, my uh, solo uh, seven inch split here with false prophet. And, uh, like I said, next month I'll be back to talk about massacre. Cause I'm sure fans are out there wondering what's going on about that. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, take it from there. Thank you again for having me on.